think this is kind of a prayer. Empty me out. Fill me with you. Lord, there's nothing I can give to you. I lay my life down here at your fool or not, that's okay. Um, I kept trying, wanting to play that song. And this morning I'm like, no, I'm not playing that song. It's not where we're at. It's not worshipful enough. And then I was picking a, a spirit-filled song and then that wouldn't comply. So I, okay, you must be pointing me to this song. And uh, so here's where you're going to hear his voice. So I had not planned this, uh, but as I'm singing the song, the whole essence of the song, I got. Does somebody have a glove? Raise your hand if you have a glove in your possession today. Jonathan, hand me your... Okay. Glove. Not a mitten. I don't want a mitten. <laughs> No mittens. The Lord doesn't do mittens. <coughs> okay. So, this is you. A lot of you probably know where I'm going. Empty me out. Okay. Try not to stretch your gloves out too bad. So, here's you. And empty me out. Lord, there's nothing I can do. There's no way that I can serve you the right way. When I want to do something, 
the, the good I want to do, I don't do. The bad thing, I keep on doing. And uh, so I'm laying down my life here at your feet. And you give me life more com so completely. So I died with you. So catch this. I died with you. I'm buried with you. This is baptism. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and you get baptized, you are dying. And you are, ro you are raised to new life. So, the moment I believed, I rose with you and ascended with you. Lord, it's not me. Here's the Lord working through you. Do we get that? Do you get what I'm trying to show in this? That this is, this is no longer you. This is God filling you with himself and with the new you. And now he can do what he wants through you. Before you were just doing whatever you thought was right. But he, Lord, it's not me, it's you inside of me. Jesus, you're all that I can see. You're all that I want to do. You're all I want to possess. Is I want you to be living in me and working through me what you would have done. Does that speak to anybody or not? You have your father's abilities. And not your heavenly father's, his father's. Okay. I don't know, it spoke to me. Um, you put up our, our pictures here. We've seen some of these, so last week I thought this was going to take five minutes, and it, <laughs> it took a long time. So I think this first part is going to take five minutes, but it's okay if it doesn't. So if, you, if I go somewhere and you still have a question, pop your hand up, and I'll do my best, my ability, to try and get some understanding. First we have, in, in order... Not always. Sometimes we just go by blind faith. God said it, so we'll do it, whether it makes any sense or not. But as we begin, we kind of need to understand who he is. It's Abraham. Abraham is the father of the faith. He, he hears God tell him, you need to move away from your father. So he moves away. And so then he goes a little, goes a little farther, finds a place, builds an altar, and it's kind of like God gives him that place. And then he goes ahead and goes on somewhere else. Well, eventually God brings him back to that place. And eventually he begins to hear God's voice. And he does it whether it makes any sense to him or not. Even if it goes against everything he knows God to be, he's still obedient. Because God's going to work it out because he's learned God's voice. So, this is the introduction to the Holy Spirit. He is a he. That's enough for 2021. 2023. Yeah. Or, sorry, 2023, sorry. Or 2020. 2020 or 2021 or 2022 or 2023. That's more than enough for people to grasp in their head. He's a he. Not everybody gets that. People don't get... I'm on a bunny trail quick. Um, God of the Godhead, God, God. You got God, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God up here, what's he go by? The Father. That's what he identifies as. The world needs to catch that. He's the Father. And Jesus is not unsure of what he is. He is Jesus. He's fully man and fully God. Then you have the one that 
that we're talking about, the Holy Spirit, that we can't always get and we can't always understand. But he is a he, not an it. Definitely not cousin it. He is not the force. Some people just think God is a force. That, that the Holy Spirit is a force. That he's not a he. But if you go to the book of Acts and they lie against, you're not just lying against man, you're lying against God. And then it, later in the same paragraph it says you're lying against the Holy Spirit. So the, in that it's saying the Holy Spirit is God. So he is not a force. He is a person. And so when you look up, trying to figure out what makes a person, they have to have a mind and a will and emotions. And through scripture, it shows where he, he has the mind of the spirit in Romans 8. He has a will just as he determines. The spirit decides something. And he has emotions because you can grieve him. You can do different things with his emotions. Here's where I said about he is... God. I think I may need a new battery. Um, he is the third person of the Trinity. This is all review. Uh, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So the three parts of God. So we're just going to go over that again. Whether there's three parts of an apple each one of those parts is still apple. The same way I have a hand. And when you get real specific, you can go, I have a thumb. I have a pointer finger. I have a pinky finger. I have another finger. Um, I have a ring finger. But what is that? It's a hand. But all those are part of the one hand. Me and Anthony were having a discussion, and I thought, oh, I need to add that to the, to the list. A, a way throughout church history, the way they explain the Trinity is there's one what and three who's. We have who, who the Father, who the Son, who the Holy Spirit, but they're all one being. They're one, they're one what? They're one, cre not a creation, they're one being. But there's three persons. So he will live in you. He will be living in you. Uh, and here's where he was in David in, in the Old Testament. And David had committed murder. He had committed adultery. He had probably broken all of the Ten Commandments. But God had still not taken the Holy Spirit from him. So... Acts 1, he says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And so they wait, and they wait for 10 days in the upper room. And he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. So you will receive power. Power for what? Power to live the life that you're supposed to live. Power to do the things you're supposed to do in life. That ability that you within your flesh do not have. You do not possess. Um, so, review. God, is, God the Holy Spirit is a person. He is God. He is part of the Trinity. He's living in you. And he has power. Where's my little thingy bottle? Here's what we had before. That this is how the world goes. You just plug into yourself. Just find that within yourself. That pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You, you have the power within you. No, you don't. You've got to find real power. And we can hook in there and we can find real power. The same way we need to find real power with God the Holy Spirit living within us. 
same way that glove was, that that's him working in us and through us. So that's the review. Any questions where we're at right there? Okay. What the Holy Spirit does. If, if you're looking at trying to figure out, okay, was well, this something that God's going to do within me? Some of these, it's not even the Holy Spirit living within us. Uh, the second one here, convicts. John 16, 8 through 11. That says, um, the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He brings conviction. He <coughs> tells you within your heart what you're doing is wrong. And so he doesn't have to be living within you to do that. He, you can be anywhere in the world, and he can convict you <coughs> of your sin. And so when you hear God's voice in that way, it's a beginning of knowing that voice. It's not all of it, but it's a start. Um, but the first one there, he brings love. I was been working on this uh, the slideshow all week, trying to get because I'm a visual person, so I I teach try to teach visually, and uh, so I'm going through and I'm making all this stuff out, and I go, what what has God moved in me to help me understand the Holy Spirit, and I hadn't put that verse in. And that's Romans 5.5. 5. Anybody tell me what that says? This is the Holy... Let's, let's open it up. Um, open up your Bibles. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 1 of chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're justified, we believed. Um, verse 2. Through him we have obtained access by faith into the grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. You notice there; those are things that he's building within us. He, he's... We have difficulties. We have sufferings. Then that produces endurance within us. In other words, we're not giving up. This, this, this problem that we've gone through has made us stronger. So it produces endurance. And it, that endurance changes us. That, is, that ability not to give up has produced within us character. And that character produces hope. And that hope does not put us to shame. But here's, here's the part that, that God has moved the most through, through all the things understanding the Holy Spirit. This one, he's helped me to understand how the Holy Spirit works. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Get that. God's love has been poured into our hearts. So he poured love into my heart. How? Through the Holy Spirit. 
What's the fruit of the Spirit? First one, love. So he's pouring love into our hearts. He's pouring love into our hearts. And the reason this speaks to me so much is because there's so many parts of my life where that love's not there. And he pours his love into my heart. What, what is God? God is love. It's not, he's a little bit of love and he's a little of this and he's a little of that. He is love. And so when his Holy Spirit is in me, why is his Holy Spirit in me? Because I've accepted him as the ruler of my life, accepted Jesus' sacrifice for my sin. So the Holy Spirit is within me. And uh, what does it say? It says that the Holy Spirit will bring power. So let's just think with me. This is the picture I get. Uh, what runs, some of my mechanical friends here, what runs an engine? Alternator. Alternator. What, what makes it move? Fuel. fuel. What does that fuel do when it's in there? It, it, it combusts. It's a combustion engine. What's another word for something that combusts? It explodes. What's, what's the uh, Greek word for power? Dunamos. Dynamite. Explode. So get that picture. This is the picture God's putting in my head. There's little love explosions. I... Just, just, just imagine someone that maybe you haven't got along well with. And then imagine that little God explosion going, okay, they're made in God's image. Jesus died for them. And his desire is that they spend eternity with him. That gives me a little God explosion within me. Okay. I may not have liked that person. I may not have liked, but now I'm looking a little differently at them, at who they are and how they're acting and whatever. And that's love is shed abroad in my heart through the Holy Spirit. I've connected with him. I have not connected with my own stupid opinion who that may be full of anger and dislike for what some one or something does instead of plugging into my own sinful nature I take out of there and I plug into him and what he has and he has power he has power to love where I lack that so love is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. If we can just get that. I mean, I've got 60 other slides. But if we can get that. That the, we're wanting the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit will do. Is make us able to love. Make us. make us to love the unlovable. I don't know about you, but I was quite, <laughs> I may be quite unlovable now, but I was quite unlovable before Jesus. I, truthfully, I don't know why she married me, because I wasn't that lovable. Um, but Jesus accepted me. He found Someone who was unlovable. 
and has put love in him with the ability to love others who may not be as lovable as others. So get that. Love is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he hath given us. So that's just one of the things. He's the seal guaranteeing our inheritance. That's the Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. He gives us gifts. Anybody know what the gifts are? We'll get to those. He'll give us the fruit. Any of the young folk? Did you talk about it this week? Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruit that the Holy Spirit brings into our life. Gives us joy. Romans 14, 17. He teaches us. You notice when I pray that I ask the Holy Spirit to teach us. And the reason I do that is because that's his job. When I pray... Uh, before we get started, a lot of times I pray that he convict us in the places we need convicted. That's part of his job, number two up there. Um, I ask that he would comfort us. That's another job that the Holy Spirit has. That's his, those are his job titles. That's what he does. And uh, so he anoints. 1 John 2.20. He baptizes he guides us. We don't know what, where we need to go, what we need to do next. He will guide us. Uh, Micah tells us that he empowers us. It's not by power, it's not by might, but by his spirit. That's where this power comes from. He sanctifies us. Uh, he cleans us up. When we have the Holy Spirit living within us, Oops. And we begin to hear his voice. <clears throat> let, let me. <laughs> this is going to step on toes. Um, when you're watching something on TV and uh, the Holy Spirit's in you, he's going to go. this out and you go no but I like this show uh, hmm I shall not commit adultery ooh we've made watching people commit adultery as entertainment that's how we entertain ourselves thou shalt not murder oh I love the entertainment of murder I, I entertain myself by learning how to kill other people in the game that I love. It desensitizes you. You, you know what they do today in, in the military? Uh, you've seen all those kind of things where they, uh, uh, they go through a room and uh, uh, so you find the bad guys and then they shoot the bad guys. They will now, they don't, they, they make the bad guys as a woman holding a baby. Why in the world would they do that? So that they don't be more willing to shoot a baby. It desensitizes them. You're thinking, oh, well, she's the good person. No. They're training people to go into places like little towns. And this is the enemy. And this desensitize you to shooting a baby. What I'm trying to tell you is I'm trying to get the right visual, but I don't know what that visual is. Um, your life, you, the Holy Spirit is not 
a physical. He's not, this much room in my life, if I can get this into me, now I've made room for the Holy Spirit. No, a lot of it happens here and here. And if I have filled my life up with all this junk, there's no room for him. And you go, well, he's, he's not physical. There's, there's room for him in my body. No, when you, it's the reason it says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. When you grieve him, this is a way to understand it. This isn't completely, it kind of shrinks him a little bit. His voice isn't going to be as loud. His voice is a still quiet voice. But the more you do things that are completely contrary to him, the less you hear him. And the less you hear him, and the less you hear him. And you go, well, I want to be used by God. Then give him some room. Give him room in your life. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse. But I think a, a lot, a lot rides on that. A lot rides on that. If you want to hear God's voice, you have to cut some stuff out. You really do. And it can't, it's not always bad stuff. I, this, this week was a good example. I spent, and I, you thought I was joking when I said I had 60 um, there's 65 slides up here. And that's my job. I'm trying to get us where we can understand. But I stopped listening to God and started going, okay, I want everyone to understand God. And so then I was tired after reading and working. And then it's like I didn't spend as much time just being quiet with him. And so this morning, I, what I try to do on Sunday mornings is I come in and I do all the stuff I got to do and then I'm just sitting back on the bench back there and just being quiet and listening to him. And I thought, well, how much time during the week did I just stop? I didn't have a, didn't have a song playing. I didn't have a scripture that I'm trying to figure out, just quiet before him. Really contemplate that. How much time of quietness do you give him? It, number one, it's helpful. Number two, we don't do it in this culture. We, we always have something on. We always have something to entertain your brain. Well, maybe if you entertained your brain with the Lord a little bit more, we'd be a little stronger. But that takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice. You have to go, well, this is what I like. Well, which one do I like more? The one who said, I'm going to go to the cross. For you or your flesh I know which one he wants you to listen to <clears throat> what else the Holy Spirit does he bears witness to us in our heart he gives discernment helps us to understand things he reminds us I need a lot of that lately um, and this really isn't what he does but it's what he is he's omnipresent he's everywhere he's no matter where you are there he is so uh, when the bible is trying to same way i'm trying with the glove trying to show you how the how the holy spirit is the bible uses different things going this is the, the holy spirit is like this the Holy Spirit is like a dove. 
Matthew 6, 36. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven opened. There's lots of things going on here, but get that he's like a dove. And he saw, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. It wasn't a dove descending on him. Like a dove descending and lighting on him. And then the other thing that's going on is a voice from heaven. This is my son in whom I love, and I'm well pleased. But the Holy Spirit is coming down on him like a dove. What is a dove like? What, it, what does a dove symbolize? Peace. Peace. Um, when, when Moses, uh, no, when Noah was on the ark, first he sends out a raven. Because a raven is going to go and land on anything. But a dove, he sent out a dove. He knew there was land when he sent out the dove. Uh, because the dove came back with the branch in its hands, <laughs> tendons, whatever. What do you call them? Talons. Talons. Or in his beak or however it was. And uh, so the dove would not land on anything dead. The raven would. Um, so the Holy Spirit is gentle like a dove. Brings peace like a dove. So he's also like water. And if you remember uh, Steve Manning trying to explain this to us uh, a couple months ago. He was explaining how there's when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, there is there's a well of water that's a spring of water that's going to well up inside of us. But then there's also what's going to become a river. There's different amounts of the Holy Spirit depending on the room you're willing to give him. If you're only willing to listen to him 15 minutes on the back of the at the back of the church back there if that's all you listen that's all the power you have but if your life is focused on the lord on the father on the son on the holy spirit you will have more power more ability more strength like a river flowing out of you like rivers of living water. Um, it says living water. When you have... Israel is a good place. That God picked the best place to explain all these things. And there's places in, in Israel that are just completely desert-like. But when it rains, then there's these little rivers. And then along those rivers, the things begin to grow. And life comes back to the desert. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. He brings life. He brings life to us. <clears throat> I'm going to be harsh, and I, I don't want to be harsh. <clears throat> but it's kind of like waking someone from sleep. And that's what God talks about us in the Old Testament, that, that we're sleeping. The church is asleep. Uh, <laughs> does any, anybody here watch Doctor Who? Raise your hand if is it probably just my family. No, there's a few of us. Remember there's an episode in the new Doctor Who and there's the TV screens and then the lightning shoots out of the TV screens and pops on these people's heads. And what it does is it begins to suck the life out of them. It's kind of the thing that the people in the 50s used to always say, well, they call it the boob tube because whoever's staring at it becomes an idiot. 
and, uh, and it's sucking your brain cells and you, you don't think anymore. <clears throat> we no longer have people who sit and watch TV for two hours a night. We have, this is all some people do. I want you to get this. This is not me slamming things that, I, I battle with these things too. Watching the TV, playing on the computer, looking at different things. This is not life. This is, that's not what God created you for. That's not what he created you for. And you know that because there's times when you do that and you just, this is me. Maybe I'm the only one that feels this way. After I overindulge on watching something too long, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a little brain dead. And I'm a little less full of life than I was before. And you just get so flip, flip. Flip, 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 flip. And then you get in life and you go, I'm talking to this person. Wow, I wish I could just flip them. Get them out of my life. Get that out of here. That's where the Holy Spirit has to come in and repair what you've done in your life and shed love abroad in your heart. Because what we've done is we've fed a monster. Your flesh is a monster. And it never gets tired. That, that's what uh, Solomon tells us. He says, Solomon was the richest man who ever lived. And he indulged himself. He did everything. Wine, women, and song. And then he went on to, to building, having buildings built and giant gardens and all these things. And in the end, he's like, none of this brought life to him. And he, found, he said at the end of Ecclesiastes that what brought him life was God and, and following his commands and doing what God had created him to be and to do. But we settle for something else. And I know why we do it. And I'm still stepping on toes and I'm sorry. I really am. I truly am. But God has to push us off this cliff. We think that that's going to recharge us and give us more energy. But if you really look at it, you know you're not. You know you have not just recharged. You haven't. So, I'm jumping off that horse. Um, what else is the Holy Spirit like? Um, he is like fire, tongues of fire. Um, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. <coughs> God is so smart. If you have a little fire here, how do you keep it going? You feed it. What we do is we douse it in our life, and then we go, ah, I'm feeling awful cold, feeling awful dry. Not close to the Lord. We put out the fire. We grieve the Holy Spirit. He's like a wind. Acts 3.8. This is where, where Jesus is trying to explain to the teacher of Israel. To Nicodemus. About being born again. And he says the wind blows where it pleases. You hear it sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. 
there's things going on that when you watch, you go, I, I don't understand that. And that's how it is with someone who is listening to God. You may not always get what they're doing, but they're just listening and being obedient. And it also says that the Holy Spirit is like oil. This is one, I, I don't know why this affected me so much. We had a men's group a, a, a long time ago, and someone recited Psalm 133. And uh, just saying how, uh, how good it was for men to come together. And it was like oil on uh, Aaron's beard. And why well, I'm tearing up. Uh, on his head and rolls down his face and on his beard and down onto his clothes. And speaking of this is the Holy Spirit just being all over us. And uh, just like oil. So... The Holy Spirit, the, the word that is used for him is paraclete. And we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and what that word means is like a mediator, like a lawyer. If you get yourself into some problems, he's your mediator. He's the one who helps you out of the difficulty. Um, and he's our intercessor. He goes between us and the one who's going to judge us. He's our advocate. He's our helper. He guides us in all truth. So, it is ten till. And there's another section. So, What questions do we have about what I've gone through so far? No questions. Well, I have questions, uh, because, and this is poking that horse again, because I, I don't like poking them, but I'm gonna poke it. <clears throat> You tell me when you watch someone on TV, uh, and this is what I've tried to stay away for, for years, but I, I see people doing that. And you watch a show where people are completely naked. And they're acting like they're having sex. Do you feel close to God there? Did God create sex? Yes. 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 That's what one, one Christian comedian I like said. He goes, people always talk about Christians and having a problem with sex. We worship the God who created it. Where it gets to be a problem, where it is out of the way it was designed to be used. And for me to sit and watch other people, I don't care how you explain it. It's wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. We, we were discussing at men's group, and you've all heard this story before about the dog poop. Um, you've got, uh, uh, there's um, kids are telling Dad, I want to go see this movie. Dad looks up the movie and he sees there's all the stuff in it. And the kids go, oh, but it, it, it's got great actors. The actors are amazing. Amazing actors. The cinematography, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, uh, and so the dad's like, but it's got all this stuff in it. Well, it's only got a little of that. It's, it's not a big problem, Dad. Stop being an old fuddy-duddy. There's stuff like that everywhere. And the dad says, okay. Give me some time. You, you, you think about it, you pray about it, and come back to me. I don't think you should go because it's got sex in it. It's got murder. It's got murder, adultery, stealing, lying, coveting, all those commandments. And uh, so he says, okay, I've baked you some brownies. 
And the kids are smelling the back brownies. Ooh, they smell really good, smell really good. And uh, so the dad says, okay, I just want to explain. Um, I put some flour in and I put some, uh, lots of sugar in, and I put some chocolate in. And then I went outside and I got a little dog poop and I put it in it and mixed it in. And you can't smell it, you can't see it. There's just a little bit of dog poop in it. Just a little bit of poop in the brownies. Do you want the brownies? Do you guys want poop brownies? That's what we intake. Not a little bit. Because you can all, you all come to my house and go, well, pastor, you've, you've, you got that and you've got that. What I'm trying to go is we have a steady diet. We have a steady diet of this stuff and we go, it's okay. It doesn't affect me. I will let you know, yes, it does. It affects your spiritual life. It affects it drastically. Right. And I, was, I forget who I was talking to, but it was like, you can't even watch commercials anymore. Some of them are worse than that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There, there's commercials that are like, I'm glad my kids aren't little kids anymore because I would have to explain all this to them. And uh, so I'm just poking that again because there's parts of our life, if we want to move ahead, if we want to move ahead in the Lord, there's things that have to be left behind. The same way in your life, I, I, I think this is a good way to explain it. Um, when I moved out of my parents' house, I left a lot of junk behind because I didn't need it anymore. And there's things that when you, when you grow up and you move on, there's things that you leave behind. Uh, when I was a child, I, I lived like a child, I thought like a child. But now I put those childish things behind me. We live in a culture that we're glorified. We're, we glorify 30-year-old men with their video channels. That that's their life. And people get really mad. They get really touchy on this stuff. But is that what they were created for? Is, is that what you are created for? Do I have an answer? Is that what you were created for? No. No. That's not what you were created for. But that's what we settle for in our lives. Because the other things are more difficult. And there's, the reason I'm pushing these things is there's things that God wants to move us to, but <laughs> I'm, I'm like Jesus in this. I don't want anybody left behind. I don't want people left behind back in Egypt. <laughs> I want everybody set free. And uh, so, thoughts, questions, stones in your pocket. I must not be pressing very hard if nobody. Yes. What you said about making room for the Holy Spirit. I was in my 50s and I got challenged by a pastor. Have you ever read the Bible cover to cover? I'm not a good reader, but I'm a great listener. And my wife and her aunt bought me the whole Bible. And I listened to them. And as I listened, the Holy Spirit revealed things in the Word to me. And I was going through a book that's here called Finally, and it's about a slave owner. I found out later in studying the Word. He was a slave owner. I believe it's Titus was the guy that Paul 
showed up was a slave that ran for Philemon, and he said, I'm spare his this. life. Back then, they killed the slave if he left. The owner of the slave could kill him for leaving. And Paul wrote a letter, and when you read it, you go, oh my gosh, the power in the words by the Holy Spirit changed this guy. And Titus, I believe, gave the letter back to Philemon. This is Paul. He said, I know you're praying for me. I'm in jail. But I know God's going to release me, prepare a room for me, because I'm going to come and be with you. That's how God is. The Holy Spirit's alive. And you have to open your heart when you see it. you got to go, i got to get rid of this junk so he can move in. Right. Right. And that's how it's done. It's done by the power of God. Jesus Christ is the word. This was, it's unbelievable. When you open your heart, you got to be like these guys. Innocent. Don't cloud yourself with, uh, this don't make sense. No, it don't make sense, because God is God, and we're not. But the thing is, when he said that, I'm driving down a country road, and it's in the wintertime, and all of a sudden a breeze hits me. And the Holy Spirit, I'm listening to the words, but I'm not grasping it. But when he blew on me, I knew something was coming, and then this word came out, prepare a room for me. And I knew what the Holy Spirit meant. Now, you got to get rid of this stuff. And he was absolutely right now. And ask her, my life changed drastically during this period of my life. I was full of rage, and I keep going in. Anyway. So, that just brings up to me, and it's something that some of us have heard over and over again, and, and I'm going to stop real quick. I know the doctor, the, the preachers always say it. It's real quick, this is the last thing. We were watching the guy the other night. He must have said that 15 times. He said it for 45 minutes. This is the last thing. I'm almost done. Um, but, uh, we had this little uh, track here long ago. I might have one left somewhere. And it was talking about walking around your house with Jesus. And if there's anything in your house that you wouldn't sit down and read with Jesus, uh, if it's a magazine that you wouldn't look at with Jesus, if there's any, anything saved on your, uh, on your queue on your Netflix that you wouldn't watch with Jesus, um, that you get rid of. And uh, so I was going to this church in Springfield and the pastor started talking on this stuff and I was feeling really convicted about, um, about music that I had. And so I went around and I went through all the music and I started, and none, none of this stuff makes any difference to you guys, but I, I went through, uh, I had Kiss CDs and I thought, I started reading the reading the names <laughs> of songs, and I'm like, I would have to do a lot of explaining to Jesus <laughs> about some of the song titles. Oh, but Jesus, that's, that's not why I listen to it. And you may do those same things. But Jesus, that's, that's not why I listen to this. This is one, not why I do that. But it's still there. But I, it's like the brownies. I... I it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. And so you, you, a lot of you know what I'm getting at because I've asked, would I, watch, would I watch that? Well, no, Randy, I don't think you'd watch that. Wouldn't watch that with the pastor. Would you watch that with Jesus? And you can go, uh, Randy's being nitpicky. I'm just trying to share what has helped me get closer to Jesus. And he says we have to, um, uh, what is it? If, if you're preparing to go to war, you're going to look at, at, at your abilities and you're going to look at who you're going against. You have a, an enemy whose desire is to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Are you capable right now of defeating him? No. No. You need some help. 
you need to be like David in his early days. I come, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. Did you just come from watching porn? Well, I don't know how strong you're going to be in the Lord. Did you just come from F and 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 Oh, Jesus. F and F and F and F and F and I think he says no corrupt thing should come across your lips. And you can argue with me and argue with me, but it's the word. And you can make yourself relevant, but you can also grieve his spirit. And it's which do I want? Do I want his spirit or do I want the world? And he is a lot worse about this than I am. He says, you're lukewarm and I will spit you out. You are lukewarm. I will spew you out. He's going to throw up what was your life because you have not given it to him. And so, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, we've, we've thrown out a minefield, and your word is minefield. There's places that I read it and I am convicted. And Lord, you have me share these things. And they may be convicting. Holy Spirit, if that's what you want here, convict us of our sin. <clears throat> our lack of righteousness. Because we have none. Ours is like filthy rags. We need you. And that we will be judged. Your word says that at any moment you could come. There, there comes a time when you come like a thief, thief in the night. You, we don't, that we don't know. Do we want to be doing some of the things that we're doing now? It's like you walking in the room and catch us, uh, catching us doing whatever the thing that we wouldn't do in front of you. But you're always with us. You're omnipresent. Your word says you're going to bring every thought that we've, every evil thought we've had up before you. So, Lord, with that, we know we need you. We need you to forgive me, our, your forgiveness. And we need you to sanctify us, to help us clean these things out. The same way you've led me in different times of my life. And, uh, and show us what is proper for us to have. And Lord, show us things that we're in our entertaining ourselves with that are not right. And need to childish things put away. So Lord, help us to see the difference. And Holy Spirit, where I have said things and people have, have heard it wrong, Lord, comfort. Lord, where they've taken it as a personal attack, comfort. That I want them to hear you, not me. And so, Holy Spirit, be uh, that in, a, in our lives today. So, Lord, we just thank you. And, Lord, we love you. And Lord, shed love abroad in our hearts. <laughs> First of all, for the pastor, for, for words he says. And uh, Lord, help us to love one another. In Jesus' name. Amen.